everybody. My name is Jay Gordon. Welcome back to the Azure Cosmos DB user group. And this month is uh, it's September. Wow, this year has moved by so, so fast. We've had so many great sessions that myself and my friends from the Reactor have been able to bring to you. Um, I'm really excited about today's and mainly because it is a subject that is near and dear to my heart. And we'll talk about that as we bring our guest in and we start talking about our session and what he'll be showing us today. Um, but before we all do that, uh, I want to bring him on. Uh, I want to bring on our, uh, our member of the reactor team, uh, Askia. So uh, first I'm going to bring in Askia. Hi, Askia. How are you today? Good, good. How are you doing? Great. So we are back here. And uh, I'm really glad I've got you as one of my compadres, my teammates, the people that's helped me put these sessions together. Yes. And um, when we do these sessions, uh, it's important for you to always share with us some of the housekeeping. Um, so I'd love for you to kind of roll through that and then we'll get into our guest in our session. Absolutely. Um, well, hello, excuse me. Hello, everyone. Uh, thank you for joining us for today's session. Uh, my name is Iski, as Jay mentioned. Uh, I am the facilities coordinator for the Redmond Reactor Space. And before we get started, we just have a few uh, tidbits to go over. Uh, so please take a moment to read our code of conduct. Uh, we seek to provide a respectful environment for our both our presenters and our audience. Uh, so we encourage engagement in the chat, but please be professional, uh, remain on topic, and be mindful of your commentary. Uh, we will share useful links throughout the chat, uh, so keep an eye out for that. And uh, the session will be recorded, uh, so it will be available on demand uh, on our Microsoft YouTube channel within 24 to 48 hours after the session. Uh, and that uh, will run for approximately an hour today. And that's going to bring us uh, uh, to today's uh, session with our speakers. So I will let Jay take it from there. Thank you so much. Appreciate it. And we'll see you at, uh, at the end of the show. So uh, today I've got a really great guest, a guest that uh, I've been waiting to speak to for a while. And here he is. Uh, I've got here David Sanchez and you are a DevOps consultant at Zevia, correct? Yes, that's correct. Uh, yeah, I work at uh, DevOps consultant at uh, Zevia Spirit. Yep. Wonderful, wonderful. Well, thanks for being part. And today we're going to be talking about DevOps. And like I said, this is a subject that's near and dear to my heart. I was a DevOps engineer. I was a DevOps cloud advocate for years. I uh, got to work with some of the, the best people that I know have done DevOps, like your Donovan Browns and your Abel Wangs and Jessica Deans, all these people that I can say I've known that have worked and externally. Uh, there, there's so much great DevOps content out there. And today you're going to talk to us about uh, utilizing DevOps practices for Azure Cosmos DB. But David, before we start getting into your session, I really want to know a little bit more about you. So uh, I always like to give this kind of loaded question of how did you get here today? But it literally doesn't mean how you walked into your office. It's how did you get into being here and speaking with us today? What, what was your road into technology? Yeah, absolutely. Uh, so thank you very much for having me. Uh, it's great to be here. Uh, I started my career as a consultant. I started a computer systems engineer and always passionate about helping others be more productive, uh, collaborate more. Uh, and uh, that's how I got into the uh, my previous part of that career that I started with uh, SharePoint on Office 365. Uh, I was part of the Microsoft Most Valuable Professional in uh, SharePoint and Office 365. And uh, I basically started developing a lot of custom solutions. Uh, later on, I started with .NET and I realized that uh, I was basically helping a lot of developers be more proactive uh, with their solutions. So that's how I got into the DevOps. Uh, when it was known as an ALM, uh, later on, I was part of the ALM Ranger program. Mm -hmm. And uh, then I started working at Microsoft. Uh, I stay at Microsoft for seven years. And uh, yeah, last year I started at uh, Xperit. Uh, right now I am back in the MVP program in the developers uh, 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 category. And uh, yeah, basically working a lot with uh, uh, GitHub solutions and uh, yeah, doing uh, DevOps and uh, automating things and uh, helping customers and developers being more uh, productive. And uh, I have seen a lot of uh, databases uh, of practices, DevOps practices for databases. 
and that's why uh, I'm here. So yeah, thanks for having me. You're welcome. I've, I've definitely seen, I think there's like a DevOps for Databases O'Reilly book that I remember reading like a million years ago. I think it was by like charity majors or something like that. Uh, but great. I am uh, really, really interested in hearing what you have to say today. Um, so just as like an aside, I have been playing with GitHub Actions a lot lately. I've been trying to get some uh, applications built and have an end-to-end -end deployment. And a lot of times, um, that's what this is all about. It's about end-to-end -end deployment, being able to make it so that um, your, your whole process of building resources, um, going ahead and building whatever your application is, deploying that and being able to do it re re basically repeatedly without having to worry about any of the manual work. Um, that's always what like DevOps has been about me. It's about, you know, being able to one, implement automation. It's about creating a culture of uh, sharing and uh, involving more than just one team, having a, a multitude of teams work together in order to accomplish our goals of like producing the highest quality work. So yeah, exactly. <laughs> uh, as you mentioned, basically it's a end to end, uh, solution is not like uh, some specific practice. Uh, for this session, what I basically prepare is uh, some of these practices that are basically part of the DevOps. But uh, yeah, as you said, DevOps is huge. So uh, yeah, we will be focusing more on the some of the practices can be applied to basically uh, Cosmos DB in this case. Great, great. So um, I think what we should do is why don't you go ahead and get what your deck is going to be uh, so you can talk to us our or talk to us about your agenda. And then I'd love you to go into what you're gonna show us today. So um, I'm gonna just let you go ahead, bring up your first slide and then uh, we'll get running. Perfect, yeah. Well, uh, yeah, for this session, I only have one uh, slide that is basically the agenda. So these are the practices that I will be focusing on. The first one is kind of basic. It's just version control on store procedures, triggers, uh, user uh, defined uh, functions, and so on. Uh, it's kind of basic, but I have seen so many customers and developers basically uh, deploying scripts directly to the databases without uh, tracking what's uh, the history of these scripts, what they are doing with the uh, data or the data structure. So uh, the, the first part is how to use GitHub in this case for uh, keeping version control of these uh, scripts uh, that I mentioned. The first, uh, the, the other part is uh, infrastructure as code. Basically, it's uh, how to deploy the uh, Cosmos DB resources um, in an uh, automated way with, uh, in this case, ARM templates. Uh, but th the same practice can be applied with uh, Terraform or uh, Python. The other is the uh, automated testing with the Cosmos DB emulator. Uh, this is a great tool. Uh, if we don't want to deploy an Azure Cosmos DB service and basically do some local testing. So uh, that's the, the other way of how to automate this uh, test. And then uh, the, the part that uh, will involve more uh, in GitHub actions is the CI CD to automate this uh, continuous integration, continuous deployment tasks. So with that, uh, as mentioned, I what I pre uh, prepare for this session is a uh, GitHub repo. It's public. It's live right now, and uh, yeah, it will have the the, the code for uh, all these uh, practices. So uh, let me share my browser here. Okay, so uh, yeah, this is the the repo. Uh, as you can see, it's uh, under my account, the Sanchez CR uh, slash Devil Practices for Azure Cosmos DB. And from here, um, you can see that I have uh, a workflow file. Uh, I have the infrastructure as code, uh, like I mentioned, ARM template. I have a sample application, a web app application built with .NET 7, uh, store procedures, and triggers. Uh, I will go through some of these basically files, like the code owners. And uh, for the readme file, you can find here basically the status of the workflow that I have, the GitHub Action workflow, and the link of this session and how to deploy basically the Azure resources that I have uh, in this case manually, if you don't want to do it through the uh, CI CD workflow. All right, uh, so just to do like some uh, basics uh, for, for those of you that might not be familiar with uh, Cosmos DB emulator, this is basically a tool that you can download, install, 
Uh, in GitHub, we use the GitHub runners. These are basically the agents that we use to run all the automated tasks that we have. So part of the uh, tools that are already pre-installed in the um, uh, runners is a Cosmos DB emulator. So we can use basically the runners that we have available uh, in GitHub to run uh, the different uh, testing that we need in the Cosmos DB emulator. As well, we can use it uh, locally to develop. But uh, yeah, in this case, we will be using for testing. Uh, next, we have a CI CD workflow uh, with uh, four different stages. Uh, in the first part, we have the build.net web app. Then we have the QA environment. Uh, this is using um, basically a QA subscription uh, in Azure just to test uh, everything before going to production. Uh, next, we have the production environment, and uh, it's basically deploying its own resources, uh, and we are deploying the scripts that we have uh, for um, uh, yeah this, this environment. Uh, and then we have the testing with Cosmos DB emulator. So uh, this is uh, something that, uh, yeah, it's, uh, uh, it's not part of the workflow, but it's something that, that we have um, as well as part of the, of the CI CD. Um, in the GitHub, uh, we have the environments, as mentioned, production and QA. Uh, so we can set up rules for these environments. Um, in this case, if I go to the settings of my repo environments, I can see that in production, I have two protection rules. The first one is that when I go to deploy to production, uh, I can define who are going to review basically these deployments. In this case, I have my myself as a reviewer. Uh, I can allow it, uh, admins can bypass this configuration. And also uh, I can define which branch is allowed to deploy to uh, production. In this case, only my main branch can deploy to production. This means that if I have another branch uh, and I create a pull request uh, to basically um, uh, deploy to, to production, it needs to be merged uh, and so on. So I can define other uh, settings, like for example, uh, environment secrets, um, environment variables. In this case, I need to make sure that all the resources that I'm, I'm going to deploy to Azure are only in my production resource group. So that's basically one of the variables that I have here. Uh, the same with the QA environment. For QA, I can define um, the reviewers, wait time, uh, secrets. And in this case, the only variable that I have here is the QA uh, resource group. And uh, I also have some uh, secrets and variables uh, at the repo level, not per environment. Uh, these are basically uh, things like the Azure subscription ID that I'm using for this demo. Uh, probably in a more real world scenario, I will use uh, different subscriptions for my QA and my production environment. Uh, also, I have the Azure credentials. Uh, this is a, a service principle that I'm using to connect or to deploy uh, from GitHub to Azure. And then I have the, the service principle um, ID uh, that is basically the client ID that I'm using to, to deploy. So David, these all are able to be, and if, if just based on what I know, and I just want to share this for our audience, these all can be referenced as variables within our action. And if those of you who don't know, our actions are written in YAML. And so for those of us who know YAML, it's pretty, um, pretty typical, but if you're not the biggest YAML expert, I can say that it reads pretty simple. It's mostly about understanding the linting and the formatting. Correct. Yeah, exactly. Uh, yeah, these are features that are available uh, uh, for free. In this case, I have a public repo. So all the uh, actions, minutes that I have are available for free. Uh, the environments, uh, the uh, defining secrets, uh, for the environment at the repo level. Uh, yeah, these are basically uh, features that I have available as part of the GitHub Actions. Uh, GitHub Actions is, uh, yeah, as you mentioned, this product that enables me to create a workflow to automate tasks, uh, like for example, the CI CD. And uh, yeah, we will take a look at the, at the JAML file that, that you were talking about. So, sure. Yeah. And just for everybody, if you're not, if you're still new in development, you're curious, CICD, it stands for continuous integration and continuous delivery or deployment. It's about creating tools to be able to 
imp, uh, have your code go into your production environment or even your development environment without you having to go and manually do any of the work. There's processes that you'll see here in GitHub Actions, and GitHub Actions is a great CI CD tool built into our repository um, service, GitHub. And, and you can create these workflows. And uh, David, I know you're going to be showing us that, so I'll let you continue. Thank you. Yep. And everybody, uh, if you have questions, please put them in the chat. We'll try to get to them as soon as we can. Yep. Excellent. So, uh, yeah, as you mentioned, the uh, requirement for the YAML files uh, are that needs to be stored in this uh, path under .github slash uh, workflows. So that's where I have my uh, YAML file. Uh, I can have multiple YAML files. Uh, in this case, uh, this YAML file will be triggered when there is a new push in the main branch, or there is a pull request against the main branch. Uh, I have the name of the uh, workflow, and then I have the different jobs. So before going to the to the jobs, uh, I want to uh, explain a little bit the, the, the uh, sort procedures that I have here. So um, as mentioned, the idea of using GitHub to uh, keep track of the all the different um, yeah, server scripting that I have, like in this case, triggers, store procedures, uh, is that I can track basically the history of these files, know what I'm doing uh, against the database. So in this case, I have this very simple uh, store procedure. It's just uh, responding with the body message saying, hello, Azure Cosmos DB, and that's it. Uh, I'm using the um, Node.js uh, SDK to create these uh, store procedures. So um, yeah, as you can see here, what I'm doing for creating this store procedure is just defining an ID uh, that is basically the name of the store procedure. And then the body is basically the function, uh, getting the context of the, um, of the uh, store procedure and then the response and then uh, replying back. Uh, what I did for deploying these scripts is to create uh, another function that basically takes uh, what endpoint do you have, what key, what database ID, container ID, well, basically where you want to deploy your store procedure. Uh, take the store procedure file, uh, and then basically if you want to do a test for this store procedure. Uh, and uh, here, basically, if it is uh, against the Cosmos DB emulator, the local host, it, it will disable the uh, TLS verification. This is because uh, Cosmos DB used their own uh, self-service for the uh, SSL certificate. So we are going to disable that if it is basically against the Cosmos DB emulator. Uh, then we define basically the Cosmos client. Uh, we pass the uh, endpoint and the key, uh, create the database if not exist, uh, same with the container. Uh, then we load the um, store procedure file. And from these, uh, we create the uh, store procedure. Uh, if it exists, if we get an error uh, 409, it means that exists. So we replace it with a new version. And uh, if we want to include the test, basically we uh, uh, pass some uh, results. We call the store procedure, execute it, and then basically lock the results. Uh, and then this is just validation uh, that we are getting all the parameters. And uh, this is basically the execution where we call the function. Uh, we pass the endpoint, database, and, and so on. So um, same with the triggers. It's the same uh, structure that I did here. So we have the uh, sample uh, trigger. Uh, this is basically just adding a timestamp to the document that we are uh, loading. Uh, the trigger basically uh, can be executed before it's uh, inserted into the database. So in this case, it's uh, before. And uh, yeah, what uh, kind of operations? In this case, is supporting all the operations that we have in Cosmos DB. And um, yeah, we load the document, uh, added the timestamp, and that's uh, returned. So uh, the process to create the store procedure is the, I'm uh, sorry, the, the trigger is the same. Uh, we get the endpoint key database container uh, trigger file. Uh, and if we want to do the test, and then uh, we validate if it is localhost, uh, create the database, create the container, and then create a, a trigger, uh, same way. And then uh, if we are doing the test, we create one new item, uh, add it to the database, and then uh, basically uh, lock the result. 
Um, so that's basically what we will be using in the, in the workflow. Uh, for the uh, provisioning, what we have here um, is one ARM template. Uh, and this is important because in, uh, in Cosmos DB, we have many options. So many configurations when we are creating the resource. The idea of having like an ARM template is that we can um, create the, the resources that we need in Azure exactly the same way. So consistent between different environments with the different settings that we have available. Uh, in this case, we are creating the, the resource. Uh, it's just using the minimum required properties. So we have here the, the collection, the, the location, uh, the offer type. Uh, in this case, if we want to use the free tier that is offered uh, in Cosmos DB, and then we create basically the server the, for the uh, app service plan, the uh, web app, and then we added the configuration to add the default connection so the web app can connect directly to the Cosmos DB without me having to manage like some specific configuration uh, for adding that connection. So I don't have to deal with the keys or uh, string connections or, or things like that. And then for the outputs, we have the database endpoint, uh, the database name, and then the web app name. Uh, these are used in the YAML file in order to deploy and uh, to connect to the Cosmos DB. So uh, another thing that I want to mention about GitHub is that there, there is uh, code security and analysis. These are features that are completely free in the public repos. So for example, I have the private vulnerability reporting, uh, dependency graph, dependabot, to uh, scan all the different packages that I'm adding to the, uh, my solution. Uh, I can do as well security updates if I want that depend on what basically can open pull requests if there is like some package that needs to be updated. Uh, and also we have the code scanning uh, for basically find vulnerabilities in my code. And we have as well uh, secret scanning. So secret scanning, it's uh, GitHub will scan all the different uh, uh, repo that I have here of branches uh, and will detect secret key and author tokens. Uh, and this is basically through the uh, pattern uh, partner patterns. So basically uh, Cosmos DB is part of this uh, program and it will it, GitHub will identify if I have like any uh, connection stream that is basically uh, that will be a potential leak in my in my source code. So it will uh, yeah trigger basically a flag saying that I have a possible connection uh, or, or yeah, connection stream in my, in my repo. Uh, as part of this uh, feature, we have push protection that is going one step ahead. And instead of uh, allowing developers to commit uh, secrets in the repo, I can block these uh, commits. So if for some reason I basically, as a developer, uh, push some commit that contains a secret, I will get blocked and basically I will receive an, an error. So that's uh, something important to uh, basically uh, using the DevOps practices uh, when we are developing uh, solutions with the databases, because yeah, we don't want to expose those uh, secrets in the in the uh, uh, code repository, especially if it is a fully repo, like in this case. Okay, so um, just to show you an example of that, if I go to GitHub here, GitHub Desktop. And I created a new uh, branch. Let's call it uh, test. Create the test branch, and then uh, let's uh, publish this branch. Now I am in my test branch. If I go to uh, Visual Studio here, and I have my app settings, let's replace this uh, local uh, Cosmos DB, uh, basically connection to the Cosmos DB emulator, with the real, uh, basically. Uh, connection uh, from my QA environment. Uh, I will save this. And if I go back to uh, GitHub desktop, I can see here the change. So update app settings, that's okay. I'm going to commit that. And now I'm going to push this to the origin. So as you can see, this is basically the error message that I'm getting saying that there is a Cosmos DB key uh, identifier. And basically, um, yeah, I need to remove the secret in order to commit uh, the, the, the 
or to push this commit to, to the repo. So that's uh, part of the configuration that I can have at the repo level. So if I go here, uh, let's uh, refresh. And Dave, I have a, a question for you here. Uh -huh. um, so, you know, I've dealt with uh, having accidental credential commits. Mm -hmm. um, if if I am a developer and I have this happen, obviously it's going to remain in my commit history. What would I be doing to make sure that um, that these credentials are removed, aside from just rotating the key that you may be using? Yeah, that's a great question. So uh, the the first thing is that if you don't know that that happened, basically you will get in the security uh, tab you will get a flag in the security scanning saying that there is a possible secret exposed. Uh, from there, uh, you can have like a, a three different uh, options to, to close or, or deal with that uh, flag. The first one is to basically just dismiss the alert by saying that there is a, a false positive. It's not like actual secret. Uh, sure. It is something that you already revoked. Uh, basically, it's something that you, uh, as you mentioned, you rotate the, the, the secret and that secret is no longer valid. And the third option is basically uh, by uh, going to the commit history and try to do like a, a git commands, uh, more like advanced commands to remove that commit from the history. Although it's not recommended if it is a, a, a valid key because uh, there might be still in the in the history. But there are some git commands that you can use to remove that commit from the yeah git history. But the the recommended and the fast approach is basically to rotate the 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 secret as, as you just mentioned yeah yeah i think there's like git filter repo which is one of the like pip based tools that you can use like i think you just pip install it it's it as a python module i i i have definitely become more vigilant about making sure that any configurations are uh related to a connection stream are removed it's like it's just it's good practice and it's great that uh, a service like GitHub uh, and GitHub Actions specifically allow you to use things like Dependabot and, and secret scanning. Anyway, I'll let you get back into it. Thanks. Perfect. Yeah, thanks for the question. All right. So let's explore the code that I have in the um, YAML file. Uh, as mentioned, we have here the name of the workflow, and then we have the jobs. Uh, for the jobs, the, the first job that we have is the build. So we are building the .NET uh, web app. For this one, we need to specify the name of the job. Um, we need to specify where it will run. In this case, we are using the GitHub hosted runners. Uh, in this case, it's Ubuntu latest. Then we have the steps. Uh, and here we define like all the different uh, yeah, steps that we uh, need to run in order to complete this job. So the first one is just checking out the repo. So uh, cloning the repo, downloading the, the repo into the uh, uh, runner, the, the server. Uh, then we set up the .NET version. In this case, as mentioned, is .NET 7. Uh, we run the .NET restore, .NET build, publish, and then we upload the artifact that is the, the basically the output from the publish to uh, GitHub. <laughs> and uh, the next job is basically testing. So this is testing with the Cosmos DB emulator. We want to make sure that the uh, store procedures and triggers that we have are running um, against different environments. In this case, I can test it locally. And also I can use the Cosmos DB emulator to run this test. So uh, the first part is initialize the Cosmos DB emulator that we already have pre-installed in the runner. Uh, this code is from uh, Microsoft Learn. So basically what we are doing here is running a PowerShell script to uh, initialize this uh, uh, emulator. So uh, no firewall to avoid like any uh, network connection and uh, no UI because basically we are uh, running it in the GitHub hosted runner. So it's uh, everything is uh, through the command line. Um, and then we get basically what's the emulator base name, what is the version, the endpoint that we have. Uh, as you can see here, basically the Cosmos DB emulator supports uh, the different APIs like Cassandra, MongoDB, Gremlin, and so on. So uh, we get the IP uh, and that's, that's pretty much. Next, we set up the Node.js, as mentioned, uh, I created these store procedures and scripts with the Node.js. So we installed the, well, we set up the Node.js version, in this case with the latest one. And then we installed the dependency. We need to install the NPM package for Cosmos. Uh, 
And uh, then we call basically the note store procedure that we have that create uh, this uh, store procedure file. We pass all the different parameters that we saw uh, before, like the endpoint, the key, uh, the database name, the uh, container, and then basically the file that we want to add. And uh, this is basically to include if we want to do testing or not. So if it is uh, one, uh, it will execute the test. And then uh, that's basically for the custom CV emulator. So let's take a look at the result that we have here. So if we go to the action step, we can see all the different uh, runs that we have. In this case, uh, it will open the latest one. And uh, we can open for the build. The net basically it's uh, doing all the steps that I mentioned. So this is creating the the package that we have here. Oh, uh, sorry, uh, we have uh, this artifact. This is basically the the uh, .NET application publish that we created. And uh, for the testing with Cosmos DB, um, we are adding these uh, steps that we have here. So for uh, initialize the uh, Cosmos DB emulator takes around two and a half minutes or three minutes. Uh, and these are basically the uh, different uh, values that I was mentioned, like the version, the name, uh, the IP, uh, and so on. So you can see that basically now the Cosmos TV uh, emulator is running in this server. Uh, something important that I didn't uh, mention in this environment uh, is that we need to use the Windows latest version because right now Cosmos DB uh, emulator uh, only supports Windows. Uh, you can run it uh, through Docker uh, in Mac or, or Linux, but uh, right now it's that that is on preview. So I left the uh, link here to how to do that. Uh, but yeah, for this case, I'm using the Windows hosted runner uh, to basically uh, run that uh, this this set of uh, of tasks that I have here steps. So here we are creating the store procedure uh, because this is a local environment. Uh, you can see here that uh, I'm getting a warning saying that the uh, verification of the certificate is uh, not secure. So that's OK. It's a local environment. It's a Cosmos DB. And then I'm getting the result back from the console. Uh, same for the trigger. So here I can see the item that was created. And I can see that we have a timestamp, so that's good. And uh, that's pretty much. So for this environment, it's basically just that part. And then uh, for the uh, QA environment, it's basically uh, doing the same. It's uh, creating the uh, environment for the QA. It's using Ubuntu. Uh, we are just uh, cloning the repo, repository checkout. Then we have the Azure login because we are connecting to the uh, QA environment in Azure. Uh, we create the Azure resources. Uh, in this case, the resource group is created in the East US. Uh, we can uh, put a parameter for the location as well. Uh, we have the provisioning Azure resources. Something that uh, I wanted to, to highlight is that we have parameters for each uh, different environment. So the environments are created exactly the same. What changes basically uh, the the name, the different web app tier that we have. So it's exactly the same uh, environment, just with different um, uh, yeah settings and uh, tiers. In this case for the QA environment, I'm running the web app in a basic plan, and for the production, it's basically running on the uh, uh, standard one. Yeah. So, David, we have a, a question from mm -hmm. Siegfried, and uh, I'd love it if you don't mind answering it. Um, can your technique of creating a script to create the trigger be used with a compiled C sharp trigger? Yeah. Uh, in this case, uh, yeah, I use the Node.js, uh, but yeah, you can use uh, C sharp to create basically the trigger or the store procedure. Yeah. Great. Thanks a lot. And everybody, also, if you're watching and you have more questions, just drop them in the chat and we'll try to address them as soon as we can. Uh, David, uh, you've got about 20 minutes or so left uh, in the hour. If uh, you don't mind, go ahead and keep rolling. Around. Awesome. Uh, then, uh, yeah, we are provisioning the Azure resources. Then we have the get the Cosmos DB key. 
Uh, so uh, this step is to avoid dealing with the uh, with the uh, connection stream. Uh, so manually. So what we are doing is uh, through uh, Azure CLI, we are getting the key. Uh, something important here, and this is a feature part of the GitHub Actions, is that I have the option to add a mask. So in the logs that I run in the uh, GitHub Actions, I won't be able to see the real or the actual value of this uh, connection stream. So uh, this is basically hidden in the logs. Uh, what I mean with that is uh, if we go back to the uh, GitHub Actions, and I see I can see basically the logs uh, of this execution. So for a get Cosmos DB, you can see here that I am executing this uh, parameter here. What I have is basically the name of the Cosmos DB, the resource group. Uh, we can also put a mask on that, uh, on those uh, parameters. In this case, I'm just leaving those there. Uh, but for the actual key, uh, uh, since we are adding the mask, I am not able to see the value. In the uh, when we call basically the the connection here, this is basically what you see because that. Uh, value has a mask. So yeah, I'm not seeing basically what's the connection key. Uh, if we compare that to the um, uh, Cosmos DB uh, emulator, here you can see that I am using this uh, uh, key. And that is because this is the default key of the Cosmos DB emulator. So it's not actual like a uh, potential risk of uh, exposing that. So that's uh, another uh, feature of uh, GitHub Actions to uh, be able to uh, mask uh, these uh, uh, secrets uh, that they have. Uh, next, we set up the Node.js and uh, yeah, we uh, installed the dependency uh, and we created the store procedures. Uh, same with the testing because this is a QA, so we need to make sure that these values are uh, okay, are respected, the results, and we download the web app and then we deploy to Azure App Service. Uh, same for production. The only difference with productions is that uh, we, uh, for the store procedure and trigger, we are not uh, doing testing in this environment because we don't want to add values that can basically affect or, or have any impact on the uh, production data that we have there. So uh, this is basically the YAML file that you were mentioned. Uh, we have the, these four jobs. Um, because we have this file with the uh, workflow dispatch, we can run this manually. So if I go back to the actions, uh, you can see here that I have the option to run this workflow. Uh, if I have multiple branches, I can decide uh, which branch I want to use to run it. Or in this case, basically, uh, I can define if there is like a new branch that I need to run, I can define uh, where I want to run it. So uh, one. Uh, cool capabilities of this is that I can see the live uh, logs uh, while this is being executed. So for example, for uh, build the net, I can see that in this case, it's basically setting up the, uh, the net version, is running right now the .NET build, and so on. So uh, same for uh, testing with the uh, Cosmos DB emulator. As mentioned, this task takes around two uh, and a half minutes, three minutes. Uh, so this might take a, a little longer. Uh, and uh, yeah, we have here this uh, now uh, workflow basically being run. So uh, we have just completed the first part of the job. Uh, now, because we have the dependency of the QA environment, I have uh, I, we have the, the QA now running. It's basically setting up the job. Uh, and you can see that we can run uh, parallel jobs like in this case. So. OK, uh, something important here is that we can have uh, protected branches. So if I go to the settings uh, branches, I can see that we have uh, protected branches. So in this case, for the main branch, we are requiring to have a pull request before merging, uh, require approvals, uh, require review for code owners. Code owners is a file that uh, basically will allow me to uh, add people to be automatically Add it as a reviewer for pull requests, depending on the on the files. So if we go to the uh, code here and we open the code owners, I can define basically who are the uh, code owners for each uh, specific files. 
Uh, in this case, I only have myself, but the idea here is that I can add other users or teams. Uh, so for example, for all, all the different YAML files, I can define like a specific user uh, if I am uh, updating the, the workflows. So they will be added as a, a reviewer for all the changes that I'm doing to these files. Uh, same with JSON or uh, C Sharp files. So uh, that's something that I wanted to uh, cover uh, for code owners. Uh, also, uh, here I can define if I need the sign it commits. Uh, this is an extra uh, security uh, for the, the commits. So this is just to verify that I am adding code as uh, with a sign it commit. So it's basically a verify commit. Uh, if I go to the code here and uh, take a look at the commit history, you can see that all these are basically verified. So these are time. Uh, this is just that uh, these uh, basically commits are uh, signed with a certificate. In this case, if I want to enable this, I can go to my user then settings, and from here, I can add the keys that I need to uh, uh, basically create this uh, verify commit. So, <clears throat> OK. Uh, let's see how we are doing this one. Uh, OK. Yes, go back. OK. So it seems that uh, the testing with Cosmos DB is still uh, being executed. Uh, it initialized the uh, uh, Cosmos DB emulator uh, successfully. So now we are basically creating the test procedure uh, and uh, uh, trigger as well. So yep. now it basically completed, executed. And for production, uh, because I added the uh, reviewer, uh, I need to approve to make sure that basically this is good to go. So this is a good way to make sure that everything that was deployed to QA, it's uh, safe to deploy to production. So if I go back to the uh, action here, uh, here, uh, I can see here that uh, basically this uh, is waiting for my approval. So um, if we need to change that, I can go back to settings, environments, production, and from here, I can specify who will be required to uh, review this, this deployment. I can uh, set up a wait timer as well um, and other options. In this case, uh, let's go back to the execution. I want to make sure that my application in the QA is uh, good to go. Uh, also, I can make sure that the scripts are basically uh, returning yeah, time stop, I can see here. And also for a store procedure, uh, yeah, I see that it's basically getting the value that I was expecting. So, yep, it's good to go. Now, basically opening my application, I see that I have the data expected, the application loaded correctly. Uh, I can create another uh, item here. Oops. I click on the back to list. OK, create. Uh, yep, it's expecting, uh, it's basically working as expected. So yeah, it's good to go. So now I can uh, go back to the production and say that, yep, it's ready to move to production, approve it, deploy. And uh, now basically this uh, deployment uh, just started. And uh, yeah, I will get the same values for production. The only difference is that for this environment, we won't be uh, doing any test. So yeah, that, that's it. And uh, yep, uh, that's basically what I have. Uh, I don't know if there is any other question. Um, right now, no, no, no other questions. So if you want to go ahead and start wrapping up or you're just going to leave this running, more than fine. Um, it looks like you're just running through your production employment deployment that's just going to go ahead and throw everything together. Um, yeah. So um, yeah, we, we've, exactly. learned, we've learned a ton about um, DevOps, implementing DevOps practices using GitHub Actions. And I know that there are more ways of handling actually the infrastructure build. So uh, we could use Bicep and we could actually kick off a Bicep deploy 
from our workflow in, in GitHub Actions. Uh, you set up some uh, credential uh, things within GitHub Actions, like uh, David, you showed before, where your login information, subscription, um, and, and you go ahead, you can create the resources you need and then eventually run your deployment. Uh, you can make it part of one giant workflow. Um, anyway, David, I'm going to bring uh, in uh, Askia so we can go ahead and close out our session. I'll say goodbye to you in just a minute, but first I want to say goodbye to Askia. Uh, so I am going to bring up your slide uh, and just mention that we did uh, share in the chat this uh, particular survey, so you can click it directly. Um, but why don't you take it from here? Yeah, thanks, Jay. Um, and thank you all for joining. Uh, thank you to our speakers. Thank you, David. I uh, did an excellent job. Um, and just like Jay mentioned, uh, we would love to hear any feedback that you have uh, on the session or any future sessions. Uh, so the link can be found on the screen. Uh, so please go ahead and take, uh, take a few moments and fill that out. And until next time, I thank you and appreciate your time. Great. And so, David, I'm going to bring up your slide once again. If uh, people did not have their question answered today, they can get to with touch with you. Um, and it looks like you've got plenty of places for them to do that. Yes, that's right. So, uh, yeah, again, thanks very much for having me. I'm more than happy to follow up with any questions. Uh, yeah, you can find me in social media as dsanchezcr or in my website and blog uh, dsanchezcr.com. So, uh, yeah, it was a pleasure to present and share this uh, topic with you. Thanks uh, very much for the attention. Spectacular. Well, everybody, it was a great session. I think we learned a lot today and we will be back again next month. We're going to look at Postgres. We're going to look at vector search. We've got a really great guest. I can't wait to introduce you to her. Uh, but until then, I will see you next month. Uh, thank you to David. Thank you to Askia. Uh, you both had been great. And so I'm going to ask you both, let's give everybody a big wave goodbye. We will see you next time here on uh, the Azure Cosmos DB uh, Global User Group. Until then, have a great rest of your day and week. Bye now.